also that he's got power, but he's not been in the ring competitively since October last year. In that time, Casimero has had three knockout victories. His last four wins have all come by stoppage. He is a banger and he is most definitely here thinking and believing that he can defeat this brilliant South African. Well, the obvious <laughs> tactic is to get inside that, that beautiful long jab there of Teddy. Which is, is achievable, but the problem is then you have that uppercut to worry about. We've, we've seen that, how, how effective that can be in the past. He takes a little half a step back, Teddy, and then whips that uppercut right through the middle. Tete had one win, which came in 11 seconds, the quickest ever in a world title fight. Well, it's not, uh, I suspect that might never be broken. <laughs> Casimero, who'll be known to British fans as the man who stopped Charlie Edwards in September three years ago in an IBF flyweight title defence. He won this interim title in February against Ricardo Espinosa and then defended it in August against Cesar Ramirez, both those came by way of stoppage. Well, he's a quality operator, and if you're low in it, if you're low in fall, fall with momentum, and he gets it on his side, then he's, he's a really hard man to deter, he really is. So for Tete, this is keeping him in his place all the time. Pivoting on that front foot, whipping that jab out. Not shortening the gap. Tete, a tremendous athlete, stands five foot nine, and only weighed eight stone four the way it comfortably made the 8-6 limit. That's that, and that's the crazy part of it. Oh, oh, he makes the weight relatively comfortable. It's never comfortable making any weight, but he doesn't look as drawn as you see other fighters, and that's uh, one of life's mysteries, John. He wants the brilliant Japanese fighter Noya Inui, who beat Nonito Donaire in that terrific fight, what was it, three weeks ago? Oh, great, great fight. Great fight, wasn't it? And, uh, it should, could have been Tete in the final, had he been able to beat Denaire, but he pulled out of that super series with a shoulder injury. It was the right arm, the right shoulder, and that sort of an injury, it's kind of psychological, which he's got to trust himself to be yeah, able to have. throw it. Yeah, of course you have, because that, again, that right hand, which is the jab hand, of course, and Tete is, is his most important weapon. Occasion. He kind of just does enough. We commentated oh, on a fight over in Yekaterinburg last year. It was that fight last October. Yeah. And that was that sort of fight, wasn't it? He won by about a four or five point margin, but he, he never really took any risks at all. No, I, I, you know, he, he can coast the fight, can't he? So he can just he can stick in second gear, just pick you off and be happy with that. Well, fairly quiet opening round. Bell just coming up as uh, Casimero tries to launch that right hand and just whips it through thin air. to the second round. How did you score that one, Barry? I gave it to Tete. I think just you know, some of those flicking jabs were enough to give him the edge for me. Casemiro didn't really do, uh, do enough, if anything, to be fair. Quiet sort of opener, wasn't it? Come when Casimero lands one of those big punches, if or when he or, or when he fully commits to an attack, he's jumped into a few attacks, but I don't think he's been fully committed. If he, when he does that, if he can be effective, or if Teddy can read it, and like, as we said earlier, whip that uppercut in, in the, in the, on the target. Casimero promoted by the legendary Manny Pacquiao. Gibbons representing the little master over here. He's the chief executive officer or something of uh, Pacquiao Promotions. Or something. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a significant job. You know. Introduce 
introduced himself to me as that and also as the president, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure which it was. Again, Casemiro got too much experience just to rush in because he knows he'll walk on the shot. But also, with him not doing that, he's not being remotely effective. And even though Ted is not doing enough, he should be doing a lot more without that right jab, to be fair. Ted just looks huge in comparison to Casemiro. That's an advantage he always has over Trumpus every fight that he's faced. He talked about moving up in weights, that might happen at some point. And I guess another option, talked about Inui, but Rigondo. Yep. The Cuban is fighting Liborio Solis for the regular WBA title. That's coming up in about three weeks. And he's, Tete's talked about fighting Rigondo, or as he's correctly pronounced with the uh, Spanish accent, Rigondao. And look, two absolute geniuses, but it could also be a stink out of a fight. They oh. just might just both be looking at each other. Could be a chess match. Yeah, each other to make the first move, yeah. Which this is a little bit at the moment. Yeah, it is. You know, and again, Casemiro's trying to trying to attack, but oh, short little right hand there. I thought it was half a head as well. So the Tete's entourage came to the ring singing and dancing as the second round ends. Come back to Birmingham, this is the WBO Bantamweight title fight and Zelani Tete, the taller man, that's where he goes in and looks as though there's a clash of heads there. No, I think it's a good... Oh, it is actually, yeah, I thought it was a good right hand and half a head, but yeah, it was a full bloody clash of heads, isn't it? Two rounds gone, how have you scored them both? Yeah, I've given both to Tete, but you know, he's only barely doing enough, John, I just think... Well, it's what we said, isn't it? I mean, yeah. this is what he did against uh, Mikhail Aloya. When he fought over in Yekaterinburg in Russia last uh, October. Well, he, well obviously, oh, that's better there for Casemiro. Doubling up on the jab. Well, I guess he thinks, so. though, it's, it's your move to close the gap, not mine. I'm the taller fighter with a longer reach, so I, I want to keep it up. You've got to try to bring it to me. Well, Casemiro looks like he's Casemiro. Record of five wins and two defeats in world title fights. Tete five and one. He's won his last 12 since September 2012. Casimiro got him. He's got him with a body. Oh, he's getting hits. He's got him with a body shot, was it? No, I'm not sure. It was. It was a shot right hook to the chin. And he's in trouble. He's all over the place. He's in real trouble. Tete's in a lot of trouble. And the referee wants to look at him. He's allowing it to continue. But can Casimiro take him out here? It happened so quickly. And he's still got a long way to go in this round. There's one minute twenty seconds. And Tete still looks unsteady. He's got to buy some time here and make Casimiro miss. Casimiro needs to pick his punches and he can't find the clean shot and he falls down. Tete, I don't think there was a punch which put him down. He just collapsed to the canvas. He's not down recovered from the first time. shot. He's not recovered from the first knockdown. I'm sure of it. Referee asking, is he okay? Casimero wants to finish it right here, right now, and finish it he has. The title changes hands in sensational fashion. Zolani Tete stopped by Jobriel Casimero of the Philippines, and the big South African favourite suffers a defeat which was simply not expected, no way. Well, we're sat here just praising Tete up. And all of a sudden, Casemiro comes in with a short hook, hit, uh, sort of turns the body, hits, hit, hits Tete, sort of flush on the chin, squared up, 
and that was it. He crumbled. It, was, it caught him on the on the blind side from where we're sitting. And you, you, I mean, you did well to pick that up because it was such a quick, short shot. It was. He well, did the attack there, and, you know, and, and we're saying how good Teddy is, and he waits and he waits for you to make the mistake, waits for you to engage. But we didn't. You know, we wouldn't give Casemiro enough credit for all the experience he has and how quick he can close the gap. And it was a lovely, a lovely, short, powerful hook. But I think it was a right hook. Called, well, it's called, a minute or more, maybe two minutes now, since that punch was landed. It's only just now that Tete's got back to his feet. He, he, he was really, really badly stunned by this. I'm going to see it now here. Nothing's happening. Now, all of a sudden, look, he doubles up really quick, but the first one well, did all the damage, and he was gone. Well, so you see that. You can't see it there, but the referee. It was a great shot. He just he stepped around, and the left foot's gone outside of the right foot of the south floor. I don't know, right, on right, right on the temple, right on the temple, short little right, so right on the temple. And he does it again, doubles it up again, but the first one with all the damage. He jumps in with a body shot, which I initially I thought was what had done it, and then he lands with two right hands to the side of the head. And he's done, now look at this now, this is, there's nothing really clean conclusive, he got caught on the top of the head there, Tete, but he wasn't recovered from the first one. You know, the referee could have easily stepped in after the first knockdown. But, and, and the referee was Steve Green was right to step in there. Tete not defending himself. His eyes were all over the place. And wow, what a win! Tete sitting down again on the stool in the ring, and he still looks very, very dazed by what's happened in there. Meanwhile, celebrations on the other side of the ring, hugs and kisses for a new champion. And Casimero, of course, now is a three-weight world champion, having been a former light fly and flyweight world champion. And here he is, putting himself right into the mix. And they talked about Tete against Inui. I wonder if it might be Casimero against and, Inui now. And to be fair, I feel like we didn't give Casimero enough credit because he's a world-class fighter. But I just felt that he was too small, John, didn't he? Too small coming up the weights that he wouldn't be able to maybe cope with Tete's reach and physical size. And his speed as well, you know. I mean, yeah, of course, yeah. But the fact that Tete hadn't fought for over a year, I wonder if oh, that might I, be. A, maybe, a maybe not. But I don't think you can take anything away from Casemiro. What he, no, he just, he, he seen the gap. He took that step on the outside, threw a lovely short right hook, caught him on the temple, doubled it up to make sure, and then jumped all over him. I think it was a fantastic, a fantastic result. Coming away from home, we know Tete's not home. He feels like he's at home here. Coming away from home, really, as the opponent. No one really thought he would win. No, no people forgot that he's a two-eight world champion. No one thought he could win, and he, he won a sensational victory for him. And Tete, and, and very happy for him. Lovely fella, Tate, in floods of tears, being consoled by his trainer Loiso Mutaya. But it's all about the other man, Casimero, the man from Ormoc City in the Philippines, and he's the one who just cannot stop smiling. Doctor just checking on Tete once again. The belt is there. He had the interim belt already, of course, with Tete being inactive for the last year, and now he gets the world title outright. The WBO belt will be his. And where now Tete from here? Loves the United Kingdom, Tete. He's loved being based over here. But it's going to be celebrations in the Philippines. And celebration for the Pacquiao camp. Absolutely delighted by what their man has produced. Thomas Trivers up there waiting for an opportunity to confirm the result. You're talking about Teddy, and he does love the UK Teddy. Casemiro got to love the UK. He comes over and he gets and he gets come from beyond wins every time. Well, not come from beyond with, with Edwards, but Edwards, Edwards thought it was Edwards crowning crowning glory, and he and he does a job on him, and he does a job on Tete. Well, that is, you know, if you've never heard of Zelani Tete, you have to trust me and Barry. He is an out, he has been an outstanding fighter, an outstanding champion, and to give him a beating like that, a shock defeat like that. You have to give all credit to Casimero, you really do. Oh, you do, and you know, and, and you know, he must be a nice guy, because Charlie Edwards is ringside. And he's well, travelled up, up to see him, so there must be something there. And so you've got to give him, every, though, he ticks every box that you'd want from a champion, but what a win, and what a statement he makes in a, in a fantastic division. There is Charlie Edwards at ringside, enjoying the moment. 
wonder if he knows we're talking about it. And there's the moment which makes boxing special. Congratulations from Tete to the new champion. We didn't really see that one coming. And here now is Thomas Trimer. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 14 seconds of round number three. Our referee in charge, Steve Gray, waves it off. Therefore, your winner by way of...